One. So I have uh, lived here for the past 26 years. This is where I was born. I went to school in that uh, primary school that is there. And then uh, barely four months ago, like four months ago, uh, they came and uh, demolished everything. Uh, they, they say that uh, they are cartels. They are cartels who, are, who, are, who plan the demolitions and all that. But clearly we had um, NMS, NMS tractors. You know, what do you call Nairobi Metropolitan? Services. Services, yeah. They, they are, NMS is the one which came with um, a lot of tractors. And they were saying that uh, at first they came with a story saying that they were they were there was a Nairobi expressway that passed through through this area. You have seen where they are digging. Yeah. Where they are digging. So that is the Nairobi expressway. So they started with the Nairobi expressway. That was uh, October 10th. And then after one month, November 10th, they came back again and they said they wanted to you know now uh, pave way for feeder roads. Feeder roads, the ones that are connecting now to them to that Nairobi expressway. Because here there were not even public facilities. Here. These are. It is a new plan where all the houses are together and all that. So at first, we know they were coming to help us because you see, even the roads that are passed across, they would help uh, in situations of fire, if there is fire, such kind of things. They will, uh, the, the cars are able to you know, penetrate. But then again, when they say it is feeder roads, now community, community resisted at first. The first two days, the community resisted because. We did not understand what are these feeder roads. There was no, no public participation. There was nothing like, there was no any information. People come like two days and say, there is Nairobi Expressway. They come again like two days and say, they are demolishing, um, they are doing feeder roads. So after feeder roads, so after the community resisted, they did not, um, they said that uh, the community has destructed their, their, their plans and all that. So they did not tell us where exactly the, the feeder roads are passing. So what used to happen, people, all these people living uh, from this side, every time a tractor was coming to, to do the feeder roads, we'll move our things, all our things outside. Because we don't know where the road is passing, they said that it is the community who distracted and they were not able to do that. Now they start accusing the community. We'll move to the other side and wait. If your house is spared, you come back to your house. So that happened for like uh, one week. And then they got to this area, because this has started all the way from the east. Then they got to this area. When they got to this area, that day that my house was demolished, I was actually sleeping. Because the, the, the feeder road had passed through here. So I knew my house has been spared. I was actually sleeping. So um, it was around 4, 4 p.m. And then they start demolishing everything from down there. Now they come demolishing all the structures that have been left. They demolished everything from that area. And then when they demolished that other area, because that is another zone, it is called a uh, size of zone. When they demolished size of zone, they started saying there's a police station there, there's a school, there's a, like, they were, they were just saying a lot of things that the, that area, the, the whole area had to be, you know, they, they were saying that uh, the, the whole area had to be demolished because there was a police station, there was, a, I don't know, a primary school, I don't know, a secondary school, I don't know where, like they had a lot of excuses. And then the next day now, they come and demolish this other zone. They have demolished two, two very big zones. This is Milimani zone, and that one was size of zone. And most of these zones, it is where um, a lot of people, because my mother moved here in uh, 1995. She's been here since 1995. And when they came here, they, are, they were just be given a small land where you can stay because they were moved from somewhere else to here. So they were being given a small land. So we have not paid rent for the past six years. And you know the government says if you stay somewhere for more than 12 years and be stabbed, that place becomes your home. So we were very certain and we didn't even know that one day it is going to be demolished because the very first NYS project when it was being launched in 2015, Uru Kenata himself came here to this primary school and said that he's going to produce a title deed for this whole area. You know everyone cannot be given a title deed because it is a slum and all that. But there is a one title deed that someone is holding and we do not know who is holding the title deed. So there is a, there is a case in court right now. But there is no hope here because there is a sewage line that passes through that road. And people here don't even use that sewage line. People here don't use uh, the sewage line. Because um, there are other people who are paying for that sewage line. You know you have to pay for a sewage line. Here people use uh, these latrine toilets. Somebody comes back here again, now the, the, the head of NMS comes back here and says, if you, if you are able to put back your structure, you can put it back. 
What about those who are not able? You can see people have started uh, building some houses as well as build. And then they say, if you are on the road, you should not build. How do you know where the road is passing and they've never told you? So I, I have a lot of fear for this community right now. Because I don't think like, they are really trying to return this land. If they were going to do it like the, how they did it in Kibera, you know, special planning area, they come and you know build houses, better houses, and then now give them to people. That one we can say we would have been. Like, this situation is really very hopeless.